the Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning II has a little bit of a name change in the Royal Air Force. The RAF do not call it the Lightning II as it's their third Lightning, so the two is omitted. The first Lightning in the RAF inventory was the P-38 Lightning, and with just one or two test P-38s, the RAF weren't happy with it and cancelled the contract with Lockheed. It was never flown operationally. Entering service in 1960, the second Lightning of the Royal Air Force was the famous English Electric Lightning. With its unorthodox, vertically aligned engines, this was the first supersonic jet fighter of the Royal Air Force. It could fly at Mark II, that is twice the speed of sound, and had an awesome thrust to weight ratio. Spitfire, we think of its little wings, but in reality, it has a larger wingspan than the Eurofighter Typhoon. The Spitfire has a wingspan of 36 feet and 10 inches, that's 11.23 meters, whereas the Typhoon has a span of 36 feet 4.5 inches, that's 11.09 meters. Unlike the Spitfire, the wings of the Typhoon are actually manufactured in two different countries. The left wing is made in Italy and the right wing made in Spain. The origin of the square D tailcoat at RAF Mildenhall dates back to World War II. At the beginning of World War II, the US Army Air Force was a small service in comparison to the Air Forces of Europe. At first, the US Army Air Force's deployment to Europe involved relatively small numbers of fighters and bomber aircraft, and no system of group identification was used. Though there wasn't an official marking system, some aircraft were identified by numbers painted on their fuselage. In 1943, the first tail code was introduced. The Royal Air Force used a two-digit code to denote a squadron and a third single letter to identify the aircraft within the squadron. The system was impractical in combat, so by June 1943, the first tail system appeared. During World War II, bomb groups departed from England, joined massive formations over the North Sea before heading towards their targets. In order to ensure members from the same group met and formed together, the bombers had tail markings unique to each bomb group. Tail markings consisted of a letter within a geometric shape. In the case of the 100th Bomb Group, which is the unit the 100th Air Refueling Wing descended from, the marking was the letter D inside a square, hence the square D was formed. The square D became the official designation of the 3rd Air Division and the subordinate 100th Bomb Group who moved to RAF Mildenhall during the war. To this day, the 100th Air Refueling Wing is the only Air Force unit to continue using their World War II tail markings. The Red Arrows were once yellow, well sort of. Before the Red Arrows were formed, there was an aerobatics team called the Yellow Jacks, which were five yellow painted bollard gnats. Formed at RAF Valley in 1963, after the callsign Yellow Jack of Flight Lieutenant D. Jones, the problem was the yellow colour on grey days. Rival aerobatics display teams such as the Red Pelicans flew red aircraft, which looked more effective in grey weather. It was in 1964 when the Royal Air Force amalgamated its display teams into one premier unit. The name was taken from the Black Arrows team and the colour scheme as a tribute to the Red Pelicans. So the answer was a new paint scheme of red and a name change to what we know as the Red Arrows. Unknown A squadron leader Marmaduke Pat Pattle was possibly the greatest fighter pilot of the Royal Air Force during the Second World War. He had more than 40 kills confirmed, even in a short space of 9 months, but the actual amount in his service could have been anywhere between 50 and 60 kills, 
Pat flew the Gloucester Gladiator and the Hawker Hurricane. He flew with number 33 and 80 squadron. Five or six aerial combat kills known as Ace in a Day was not unusual for Pat. He was awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross and Bar. Whatever the kills, he is considered the highest scoring ace of World War II with 15 kills in the Gladiator and 35 kills with the Hurricane, but some flying logbooks suggest this figure to be more. On the 3rd of July 1941, Pat engaged enemy aircraft near Athens in the Perez Harbour. During the battle, an RAF pilot seen Pat engaging combat battling the Messerschmitt VF-110 and seen Pat's Hurricane crash into the Aegean Sea. Pat did not make it out, he was only 26 years old. The maximum time a typhoon can stay inverted on full reheats is 10 seconds. Any more time and there will be a risk of emptying the fuel tanks. The typhoon's powerful Rolls-Royce EJ200 jet engines produces 20,000 pounds of thrust each. Currently there are three main F-35 variants, the A, B and C, but what do they do and how do they differ? Well, let's start with the A variant. The F-35A oh, has been this. designed to operate from conventional runways and is the most common variant. It can take off and land just like any other fighter jet, like an F-16 or a Typhoon, and it can pull up to 9 Gs. The B variant is like the Harrier. It can land vertically like a helicopter and take off in very short distances. This allows it to operate from austere, short field bases and a range of air capable ships. It is the smaller of the three variants being just slightly shorter in length. In the UK, the Royal Air Force and the Royal Navy operate the F-35B. 207 Squadron, which is the operational conversion unit, and 617 squadrons of the Royal Air Force are based at RF Marham. The C variant is the largest of the three and is the carrier variant. The US Navy's first stealth fighter and the world's only fifth gen long range stealth strike fighter designed and built explicitly for aircraft carrier operations. It uses an arresting cable when landing and a catapult launch for takeoffs. Its wingspan is 8 feet larger than the A and B variant and has folding wings for space saving. It can pull around 7.5 Gs. The F-35C is operated exclusively by the US Navy. Runway numbers are actually based on direction of travel and the numbers derive from the compass bearings of the orientation of the runway. You take the bearing of the runway's direction and then you round this off to the nearest 10. Once you have done this, you remove the last digit, leaving you with the runway number. Now because the opposite end of the runway is 180 degrees, this is why runway numbers always have a difference of 18. Magnetic North can change dramatically over a few years. This will change the bearing of direction of travel and therefore a runway number change will need to be made. That's a lot of scrubbing and paintwork. P7350 is the only Spitfire of the BBMF to have operated in the Battle of Britain. 
It is a Mark II A Spitfire and it was shot down on the 25th of October 1940. It was flown by 20 year old pilot officer Ludwig Martel who was the youngest Polish pilot to fight in the Battle of Britain. Wounded by shrapnel and fighting to stay conscious, Martel managed to force land wheels up in a field near Hastings. Martel was trapped in the aircraft for 30 minutes before home guard soldiers found him and managed to get him out of the cockpit. P7350 was repaired and put back into service. It was ready to fly again on the 7th of December 1940, but it suffered at least three other incidents in which it was damaged during the remainder of its wartime service up to 1944. In 1947, P7350 was declared surplus to requirements and subsequently sold for scrap for just £25. Luckily, John Dale and Sons Limited recognised its historical importance and presented it to a museum at RAF Colin, where it remained on ground until 1967 when it was made airworthy for the film Battle of Britain. After filming had been completed in 1968, Spitfire P7350 joined the BBMF. Typhoon have a horn. Uh, typhoon does have a horn. Uh, do you want me to demonstrate that to you? Okay. And we call it the canopy horn. And hopefully, <coughs> there's the horn for you. <laughs> Excellent. Pilots. And uh, <laughs> I had to say, Death is me! Oh, I don't know exactly what it was. <laughs> hey, hello, I'm uh, Steven de Vries. I go by Vrieska. I'm the Belgian F16 solo display pilot. Welcome, Dead Calling Speed! We finish with a marvelous bonus fact, and it is a military aviation achievement. On the 5th of March 2021, Captain Steven de Vries known as Vrieska of the Belgian Air Force, flew on a historic flight and continued to break records in his F-16. He is the first Belgian pilot to have flown 5,000 hours in an F-16, making him one of few to have done this. He is the only non-US pilot to have achieved this too. On the day of his historic flight, Vrieska flew with three other F-16s and between all four pilots stacked up a massive 16,000 hours of flight time in F-16s. He was the 2022 Belgian Air Force F-16 solo display pilot. Oh yeah! <laughs> Ladies, gents and teddy bears, I hope you'll enjoy Ted's top military aviation facts do smash that like button and of course do support our channel by subscribing do make sure you hit that notification bell button where you'll be notified of our latest and greatest videos also have a little look about joining our Ted Collins squadron hit the join button see you soon wish you well